high-pressure gas cylinders. It's no myth, they're everywhere. They're used to contain all sorts of chemical gases, such as propane for your gas grill, helium for blowing up small balloons, propane for large ones, and even oxygen for breathing. Manufacturers and industry use a variety of materials in a variety of forms, whether it be a solid, a liquid, or a gaseous material. Careful consideration is taken to ensure these materials are handled and used as safely as possible. In some industries, including semiconductor manufacturing, potentially hazardous gases are used in the fabrication process, including arsine, phosphine, and boron. For more than 15 years, many manufacturers have come to depend on the SDS, or Safe Delivery Source Technology, from ATMI as an alternative to high-pressure cylinders. SDS cylinders completely remove the high pressure associated with transporting and using these gases by adsorbing the potentially hazardous gases onto a specialized solid carbon surface called bright black, essentially converting the gases into a solid. It does not rely on mechanical components nor high pressure to function. Its unique carbon adsorbent technology holds the toxic gas in place via van der Waals forces and requires a vacuum to release it from its grip. A pretty neat invention. The folks at ATMI have performed a variety of controlled experiments and torture testing over the years to demonstrate how safe SDS is, such as this experiment, where toxic gases were placed in a high-pressure gas cylinder and in an SDS cylinder. Then the valves opened wide in sealed chambers. The high pressure cylinder released deadly levels of chemical, yikes. But as expected, when the SDS valve was opened under the same conditions, it released virtually nothing whatsoever. In another control test, high pressure cylinders and SDS cylinders were placed inside special cast iron chimney stacks and burned in a building at a test facility to see the effects of fire on the two very different types of cylinders. As expected, the high pressure cylinders burst much sooner, like 15 minutes, compared to SDS at 45 minutes. That gives critical time in an emergency for evacuees and emergency responders when every second counts. Not only that, but the high pressure cylinders blew apart with significantly more destructive force than the SDS cylinders. So understanding the toxic dangers in an accidental release or the hazards of high pressure cylinders compared to SDS in a fire are pretty clear. The professionals at ATMI now want to run an extreme torture test to study the hazards of high pressure a little more closely and bust the myth that using volatile gases always has to be under high pressure and dangerous. This test is so extreme, ATMI has taken their team to the remote deserts of the United States Southwest in a secure weapons testing facility to do the unthinkable, to actually shoot both types of cylinders with high-powered firearms, to deliberately pierce the containers and study the effects in high-speed, slow-motion video. For this test, professional experts in the fields of weaponry, physics, engineering, safety, and video capture have gathered to ensure the testing is safe. Under no circumstances should this test be repeated without proper knowledge and precautions. Do not try this yourself. This is Robert Lee down under in Australia for ATMI. And now, let's go to Lou Blanchard out in the desert. He's one of the ATMI experts who's arranged today's test and is eager to take us through the events. Lou, how are conditions out there? Conditions couldn't be better. It's a perfectly clear day out here in the desert for our test. Great. Good luck. Thanks very much, Robert. You know, it doesn't take much to imagine the toxicity of the gases that we're talking about. Some of these gases are as toxic as five parts per billion can kill you. You breathe them and then you never breathe again. And that's pretty understandable. Yet these gases are also stored at high pressure 
from a few hundred pounds per square inch to over a thousand pounds per square inch. While I understand those numbers, what I actually want to see is what that pressure looks like. That is to say, how two types of cylinders, one with high or positive pressure and the SDS with no pressure. We think it would be interesting to see and capture it on high speed slow motion video. As one might imagine, this experiment itself could be quite hazardous and we've taken every precaution. Here to talk a little bit more about that is my friend Danny Elzer, ATMI technologist and SDS expert. Danny, where do we start with a project like this? Well, Lou, we start with an understanding that when the cylinders get with the bullet, they're going to be reacting. The bullet is traveling at a really high velocity and it's got a known mass. So it's basically going to hit that target and it's going to impart some force and momentum to the target. So basically we're building a structure to hold these cylinders in place. Second, in particular, the high pressure cylinders, they're going to be mobile. Once that bullet hits and there is pressure released, we are expecting them to move around quite a bit. So we're building that structure so that they are retained. We know that these cylinders, particularly the high pressure cylinders in industrial accidents, they have gone through concrete walls, brick walls, and also fly through the air for hundreds of feet. So uh, we want to make sure that they are retained. Sounds good. Robert, take us back a few days. The ATMI team first assembles the Unistrut support structure, which will be used to secure the cylinder targets. Then they dig, and dig, and dig, to make sure the structure itself is not thrown around under the force of the high pressure cylinder concrete footings to a depth of two feet are poured around both ends of the metal unistrut. With the support structure now in place and the concrete setting up, the team will return in a few days to run their test. Well, a few days later and the team returns. Let's go back to Lou to see what each of the team members is doing to prepare for the day's events. Lou, it looks like the structure is about ready. Indeed. We are really happy with how the support structure turned out. While everybody else is busy getting set up, I thought we'd take a minute to talk with Danny Elzer about what's behind SDS technology. Danny, what do you got here? Well, Lou, we have an SDS-3 cylinder here, and you can see that we cut away the sidewall of the cylinder to expose the carbon pucks inside. So these carbon pucks are just simply stacked inside the cylinder uh, to fill up the internal space. There are no moving parts inside of here, so it's nice that the gas just absorbs into the carbon and the only thing that brings the gas out is when a vacuum pulls the gas out of the cylinder. So you say the gas molecules absorb onto the carbon. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Sure. What happens is that uh, this is ultra porous. It looks like a solid, but it is absolutely full of holes and, and tunnels and uh, massive surface area. So the gas goes inside the carbon and onto those walls and it stays there. It's basically a physical solid until the vacuum pulls the gas out, gives it some energy to, uh, to pull the gas out and off the carbon. That sounds great. Yep. Well, this is a sample cylinder. Let's go take a look at one of the actual cylinders we're going to be shooting at today. This is Joe Depre. Joe is one of our engineering experts here at ATMI who's been helping to prepare some of the cylinders that are actually going to be used as targets during today's shoot. Joe, what are you doing here? Hi, Lou. Yeah. So we're filling uh, three empty SDS-3 cylinders uh, with CO2. Uh, we're using CO2 as a surrogate for arsine or phosphine uh, due to the high toxicity of those gases. So we have a high pressure CO2 cylinder here. We're using uh, a regulator to regulate the pressure down and then we're going to fill uh, the three SDS-3 cylinders. Uh, we're going to fill them to uh, about an equivalent uh, weight as a, a normal SDS-3 phosphine cylinder. So is this high pressure cylinder similar to one we're actually going to be shooting at? Yep, that's the exact same uh, cylinder we'll be using uh, to simulate a high pressure release. Excellent. And these are the actual SDS cylinders that's that we'll be shooting at today? Yes, it is. Very good. Carry on. All right. Well, let's go over to Tim and take a look at what we're doing to prepare the weapons.
Our weapons expert today is Tim Williams. Tim, thanks for joining us. Tim has over 15 years experience in both short and long range weaponry. Tim, what are you doing for today's shot? Um, today we have a Bushmaster BA-50. It shoots a 50 caliber Browning machine gun round. We'll be using 750 grain Hornaday AMAX. They'll leave the barrel at 2,800 feet per second. Got a Remington 700 SPS Tactical. We're gonna be using Black Hills 175 grain boat tail hollow points. And we got a POF 415 chambered in 556. We'll be using a 68 grain steel core penetrator round. As you can see, we have a pretty wide array of ammunitions here. Wow, it's quite a difference. So we're going to be firing all three of these weapons at the targets today? Yes, sir. We're going to start with the 5.56, move to the 308, and then hopefully on to the 50. That sounds good. Hey, good luck with the shot. Thanks. All right. You know, we expect to see a lot of destructive force today with this test, both destruction from the bullet actually striking the cylinders, as well as the force of the gas releasing from the cylinders. So to capture that, we have brought in high-speed, slow-motion video expert, Leo Reyes. Leo, thanks for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've got here? Absolutely, yeah. We have a, a Phantom V710 camera. Uh, this can go up to a million frames per second as far as taking a, a video. Uh, we have an Ingenue 24 to 290 zoom lens. Uh, we have a Cinemag here to uh, save all our footage. Um, you know, standard television that you see on, uh, on your home mat TV, there's 30 frames per second. This can actually shoot up to a million frames per second. Uh, today we'll probably be doing up to 17,000 frames per second. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think we should, uh, we should be able to capture some pretty cool stuff. You know, rounds coming out of the barrel of a gun and some explosions down the, uh, down the range here. So we're out in the middle of the desert. How important is light for a setup like this? You know, Light is very important, especially when you're shooting such a high frame rate that uh, the camera needs as much light as possible. Um, right now, my lens is almost wide open, meaning it's allowing as much light as it can to the sensor of this camera. If we didn't have any light, we would need massive, you know, massive lights out here to be able to capture what we have here today. So uh, I think the sunlight's very important. Even though it's 116 degrees out here, I think uh, I think with shade and proper hydration, we should be okay. Uh -huh. All sounds good. Good luck with the shot. Thank you. Thanks for helping. Absolutely. We want to emphasize again the safety precautions that have been taken for this test. These are professional experts who've considered every possible outcome and have taken every possible precaution. All personnel will be located at safe distances out of harm's way with trained medical professionals on site. We're on a closed weapons testing facility with all equipment being operated at safe distances or remotely controlled behind bulletproof glass. I want to remind you that this is an extreme test and please do not ever try anything like this yourself. With the setup almost ready, let's take a look at the layout of the shooting range. For the 100 yard shots, Tim will be here. For the 50 yard shots, he'll be here. Our target cylinders will be here, secured to the support structure the guys installed earlier. Two cameras are located along the range, one safely out of harm's way here, and the other, our high speed Phantom, will be here behind a layer of bulletproof glass. Now it's time to get down to business. The team first wants to evaluate the ballistics and the cylinder walls. An empty practice cylinder will do nicely. Tim starts with a 223 caliber rifle. Amazingly, thanks to our high speed slow motion camera, you can actually see the bullet fragmenting on the side of the cylinder. The 223 will make a small hole. Next, Tim moves to the 308 caliber sniper rifle, which packs a little more punch. And the slow motion replay. 
Yep, this one penetrates both sides of the cylinder completely and even severs part of the steel rope securing the cylinder. For all future shots, the cable will need to be up and out of the way. With the practice shots complete, it's time to bring on the pressure. 850 pounds per square inch of pressure. Remember, this cylinder is filled with carbon dioxide rather than with highly toxic gases. The first weapon of choice is the 223 caliber, which should puncture a very small hole in the cylinder. Let's watch. Sure enough, the stored pressure sends the cylinder flailing in all directions. Thank goodness it was secured. Let's watch that in slow motion. You can see a fragment of the bullet ricocheting off the cylinder. And then, wow, the 987 grams of carbon dioxide inside the cylinder at 850 PSI means that it's liquefied until the cylinder is breached. Then the gas wants to reach an equilibrium immediately. Each gas molecule wants to spread out and distribute evenly in its surrounding environment. Next, the gang will fire a 308 caliber round from the sniper rifle into another high pressure cylinder. This will make a bigger hole and allow the gas to escape faster. Tim lines up the shot. A great shot and a violent reaction as the high pressure gas rushes to escape. Let's look at the slow motion. Look at that. The bullet penetrates both the front and the back and sends the cylinder into orbit, spinning and turning. The force of the gas escaping is even enough to stir up a mini dust storm on the desert floor. As we learned before, SDS from ATMI uses bright black carbon as an adsorptive media to hold gas molecules. These pucks are so porous, an SDS cylinder loaded with ATMI bright black carbon has the equivalent surface area of 501 football fields. Yes, that's 501. Before shooting SDS cylinders, let's see how a piece of bright black carbon responds when it's impacted by one of these bullets. The bright black carbon is very, very hard, yet does shatter under these conditions. Notice how some of the carbon is pulverized into powder. This particular piece of bright black carbon has no gas absorbed into it, so that's merely small powder-like bits and pieces. We can now bring out SDS. This cylinder has been loaded with 340 grams of CO2 gas, yet it has zero pressure. As a matter of fact, it's actually under a slight vacuum at 630 torr. Tim will again start small and shoot with the 223 caliber. Look at that, it barely moved. It simply absorbed the impact of the bullet and fell over. Amazing! Let's look at the slow motion. The bullet fragments on impact, but does penetrate the front of the cylinder. We can see some of the powdered bright black escaping as it's displaced by the entering bullet. The cylinder is barely moving. Next, the team puts another SDS cylinder in place filled to the same specifications and brings out the 308 caliber sniper rifle. Tim sights the shot and with the incredible precision he's been showing all day, takes the shot. Again, the cylinder is hit and just falls over. It doesn't even consume the slack in the steel rope. 
Except for a small amount of bright black powder that escapes from the SDS cylinder, the majority of the carbon is still inside the cylinder, still holding its gas molecules. Let's check the slow motion. It doesn't even look like the 308 bullet exited the back of the cylinder. The carbon absorbed the shock of the impact. If you look closely, you can see the impression of one of the bright black carbon pucks denting the back of the cylinder wall. Now that's a lot of force, yet no catastrophic event. The team is amazed by this, but Lou has only one thing on his mind now, taking this test to the limit. Okay, we've shot the 223, we've shot the 308. What do you say we shoot something a little bit bigger? I got just the thing. Bushmaster 50 cal. We'll be shooting one of these. Now you're talking. The Bushmaster 50 caliber. This type of weapon is used in military operations for not only anti-personnel maneuvers, but also anti-vehicle maneuvers. First up, the SDS cylinder. This one is filled with 340 grams of CO2 and has an internal pressure of 630 torr, which is just below atmospheric pressure. Tim lines up the shot and waits for the all clear. Then, boom, the 50 caliber bullet looks like a Volkswagen flying out of a tunnel. The shock wave is massive. Just look at the rocks and stones bouncing off the desert floor. And pow! A massive projectile with major force slams into the SDS cylinder. Amazing! As it spins, we can see the cylinder bulge again from the carbon. And even this bullet did not exit the safer than safe SDS cylinder. The size of the bullet spills out a nice cloud of SDS carbon, but no white plume of gas. Tim reloads and takes the shot. The 50 caliber round easily passes through the high pressure cylinder and the subsequent force of gas and pressure releasing sends the cylinder sailing off into a cloud of uncontrolled gas and dust. Bye-bye, high-pressure cylinder. Lou, thanks to you and the whole team of experts and technicians, it's been an exciting and interesting few days in the very hot deserts of Arizona. Again, the SDS safe delivery source has proven itself to be an enormously beneficial component of the safety net which should be in place for using these highly volatile and dangerous gases. For companies seeking to use gases in their manufacturing operations, this has to be a technology with extraordinary benefits for ensuring added safety for the employee and the public at large. It's no myth there's a huge difference between high pressure and the safe delivery source. This is Robert Lee from Australia saying thanks to everyone for taking time today to watch the team at ATMI in their ongoing testing of their intrinsically safe SDS technology.